Well, hello there, you scrub lords, and welcome to Steel Gear Stalingrad. In case you're not aware, this is a World War II tank simulator game uh, being developed by a single person. This is an upcoming game, still heavily in development, as you can see in the bottom right-hand corner there. We are in alpha version 1.0.0, so this is very, very early days in development. However, I have been kindly given access to this game to try it out and show you guys what's available and what we can play around with. Now today, we're going to be going through the interior of the Panzer Mark IV that you guys see on the left. The game is supposed to have a total of around 15 to 17 vehicles available to play in its final version. However, there are currently only the T-34-76 and the Panzer IV that we see in front of us. But like I said, today we're going to be going through the Panzer IV interior and uh, looking at all the cool features that are currently already implemented. Now, like I said, because this is an early, early, early alpha build, there are definitely plenty of missing features that will come later on in the game's lifetime. So, if you are looking for a specific detail that is not there, or if something looks half-finished or something along those lines, just keep that in mind. Without further ado, let's go ahead and jump into a training mission, and we'll get started with the interior. And here we are. So, in case you're not aware, we are sitting in the commander's seat position of the Panzer Mark IV. Now, this is a Panzer IV F2. Now, the control system, the base control system in Steel Gear is a little bit different from your standard tank game. Uh, in the fact that your WASD keys physically move your character around, um, so you can change exactly where you sit. Now, there's not much to see here, so we're going to press the E key. I'm sorry, the Q key. I'm still learning the controls myself. To take a look through our cupola and see what's around us. As you can see, there is also an azimuth indicator around the, uh, around the turret ring, or around the cupola to let us know exactly where we're looking, or give us an, an idea of where we're looking. And this azimuth ring s rotates uh, so that 12 o'clock, for example, is always straight ahead in front of you. <clears throat> we can show that in a little bit. Now, if I press my middle mouse button, I can bring up a mouse cursor and I can interact with, uh, with different elements here. So for example, if I'm taking a lot of fire, I can close this armored shield and, and protect myself. And I could do this for every single for every single one of these guys. So if I wanted to close all of them, I could. For now, we're just going to keep them open. Um, also, I can click on them and look at them. Now, if I wanted to open the hatch, just click on click on that, and then press Q until I'm essentially standing outside the tank. I could still use my WASD keys to move about. So if I wanted to get a little bit lower, I could. If I wanted to get go down to uh, what is known as eyeball defilade, I can do that. So I can so I can still get a good view of what's around me, but also remain mostly protected. And then if I decide, you know what, it's getting a little bit too uh, squirrely out here, we're, we're we're just gonna we're just gonna go down and close the hatch. I can do that as well. Now, if you're wondering what this little bar here in the center, it, that's to allow me to have a better idea of where the gun is pointing. So I can just sort of try and line myself up with that. And then I have an idea of where the gunner is looking with the main gun. Well, there really isn't much else to say about the commander's position here. So we're just going to go ahead and move on to the most, probably the most developed position outside of the driver. And that is the gunner position. So without further ado, let's move on to there. And here we are. We're in the gunner's position. As you can see, there's a lot of uh, interesting mechanisms for us to play with. Well, not a crazy amount, but it, a, uh, a little bit more than, say, the tank commander or the uh, or the loader, as we'll get to. So let's start. Let's go from left to right here. So on the left here, we have our side uh, viewport. Now I believe. There is actually a way to to open up this armored hatch, uh, or this armored door right here, but it's currently not implemented. As you can see, we've got uh, we've got a couple of switches here. This turns off the, uh, the the dome light in the crew compartment up here, 
So if it's getting a little bit too bright for your taste, you can always turn that off. Um, and if you are fighting at night and you want to illuminate the gun sight, you press that and you can see the gun sight is now red. Uh, for now, we'll turn that off, but we can but we can observe that in a few minutes here once we get to the gun sight. Um, the next thing the next thing over here is this, and so on the left here we have a uh, we have an indicator that shows where the turret is pointing, and then the green indicator here shows where the hull is pointing relative to the turret. So when the turret indicator turns to the right, the hull indicator will turn to the left. So you ha always have an idea of where the hull of where the hull is pointing relative to the turret, in case you can't just look down and figure out where you're supposed to be. Th the next thing we're going to talk about is uh, this little lever right here. Pressing that opens up uh, just this open slot in the armor, so you can take a quick look outside and see what is directly in front of you. We're going to keep that closed for now because, well, you never know when the reds might show up. Moving on. We have this handle right here, and th oh, this handle is pretty important because this handle determines uh, whether or not the turret is going to be manually traversed, powered traverse, or hyperpowered traverse. So, if I have it on this setting and I use the traverse handle, the turret turns rather slowly, and uh, and it's it's good for fine lay. As in, you have used the power traverse to traverse all the way to the target, and then you switch over to manual to f and to lay the gun finally onto the target. And you can see here those indicators moving as I as I traverse the turret around. Now, let's say if there's somebody over here, and the commander calls out that we need to that we need to turn the turret to three o'clock, and we need to do it fast, we can switch it all the way to the right. And you can see now that the, that the hull is facing in that direction, according to the green arrow, and the turret is now facing in the 3 o'clock position. Now, the elevation is not powered. It is all manual, as is common for tank guns at the time. However, we're going to drop this into the middle position and bring ourselves back to the 12 o'clock position here. Now there's one other piece down here that's quite important, and that's this little switch right here. This is your bang switch. It is, uh, as you can see, it is mounted to the horizontal traverse, and if we click that, gun go boom. Now finally, we have the main gun sight. Now, from this position I have it set up so that way I can traverse the gun. I can also adjust the rate at which I traverse. So this is the fastest traverse position, this is the middle traverse position, and then this is the manual traverse position. I can also set range for Panzergranate 39. And the the numbers on the bottom uh, of this uh, of this number scale represent APCR. Now currently there are no differences in ammunition in the game right now. Um, right now it's just sort of all one AP ammunition. AP and like mix of AP and G. But that's okay. Their ammunition will come along later on in development. Did I mention that this was all being developed by one guy? Okay, let's bring the turret around to the 12 o'clock position again. Now before we move on to the driver's hold, there is one other thing that I that I want to point out, and that, the, and that is that the commander and the gunner can command the driver to, to move the vehicle. So I've told the driver to pull forward very slowly. I can tell him to go at medium speed. And if you listen, you can hear the gear the, the driver changing gears. can go at full speed. What we'll do is we'll open this, we'll open this so we have a better idea of where we're going. And if I tell the tank to stop the vehicle, you'll notice that he has to go through all of the gear changes in order to bring the vehicle to a halt. 
it's not like War Thunder where you just switch to neutral instantly and stop the vehicle. So, you do have to keep that in mind. Okay, since the engine won't shut off on its own, I'm going to have to restart the mission here and then we'll switch to the driver. And we're back to the driver's position. After I restarted the mission, here we are. So, as you can see, we've got the driver's hold here. Right in front of us, directly ahead, we have a periscope, which we can adjust the how open or closed it is for our safety. Now in combat, oftentimes the drivers would simply just entirely close this hatch in order to avoid taking a bullet right to the nose. And they would rely entirely on instructions from the commander as to where they're going. Now, I know a lot of people are going to scoff at this, but I've never actually driven a stick shift. I've always had automatic transmissions where I live, so... I'm not exactly comfortable with going through it in all of the controls here, but it's your standard set of uh, uh, manual transmission controls here. Over here we got an instrument panel, and we can zoom in on this and we can see all the different dials and what they do. So Tunk, for example, is the, uh, uh, is the gas tank. We've got the, I believe this is the uh, RPMs of the engine. And you ideally probably don't want to put it into this range, just saying. We have a little button here, and that turns off the dome light. And there is an OUS button and a START button. Uh, I'm not going to turn the engine on, because once you start the engine, you can't turn it off yet. So that, that functionality is not available. To my front, we've got these two switches right here. We've also got this light here, which I believe has a switch. No. Off to our left here, it appears that we have a gyro. More specifically, editing miles here, a gyro compass. This was used in the Russian and North African campaigns to allow drivers to essentially plot a course through open and featureless terrain, much like a ship does in open sea. So essentially you set the bearing, you turn on the gyro compass, and, uh, and, the, and the compass will track uh, where you've been going. Much like a navigator on a ship plots his course. And that's pretty much the entire driver's hold. There's not much else here. Like I said, it's pretty bare bones. There are, uh, There is ammunition stowage. In the training mission here, you have unlimited ammo, so you can just drive around and shoot whatever you want. <clears throat> and so to finish this off, we're going to cover the last two positions, that being the assistant driver, slash radio operator, and the loader. Okay, we are now in the radio oper operator's position without any radios. I imagine those will come later on as the game is further developed. As you can see, it's a lot more cramped than the driver's hold uh, by comparison. So here's the driver's hold for a quick comparison. And yeah, here's the here's the radio operator's hold. He's, he's not exactly... Uh, living in luxury, shall we say. To his front, he has an MG-34 tank machine gun, as well as a couple of other doodads for him to play with. He's got a he's got a handle with a trigger on it. Unfortunately, the machine guns are not currently implemented in the game. Like I said, it's, it's Alpha version 1.0. There are a lot of things that are going to be coming for this game later on. Also, did I mention this game was being made on the Unity engine? I don't believe I did. All this you see is on the Unity engine, which is pretty impressive, all things considered. Now, there's not much we can do in this position. We can, however, look through the gun sight for, for the MG-34. And get an idea of what that what that is going to look like. If you are unaware of what this thing is up above you, uh, this is a headrest. So, while you are looking through the sight, um, this is adjustable so that your head remains uh, at the correct height to operate the sight and you're not accidentally uh, overshooting, the, overshooting the eye box. So yeah, that's pretty much all there is to it uh, in this position. Let's quickly move on to the loader's position. So here in the loader's cab, we've got not much space, but there's also not much else to do here. However, we do have the breech operating handle for the 75 millimeter cannon. And if we just click that, we can open it up. Uh, and you can't really see down the bore from this position. Um, the best place to do it is in the commander's seat, but even then you can't see that far down the bore at the current moment. Uh, he will also have a coaxial uh, MG34 here to take care of. That would be the loader's job. And I believe this is a manual traverse handle. 
Something else I should have noted a little bit ago when I was talking about the gunner's position is that the tank has no turret basket. It, the, however, all of the crew are essentially attached to the turret. And what this means is, is that as the turret rotates, the commander and the gunner are rotated with the turret. Now the loader is not uh, attached to the turret. Now normally I th believe he would have a seat, but it's not currently modeled here. But yeah, you can see the attachment point down there for the seat. But yeah, the, the loader will generally have to just keep cognizant of where the turret is rotating to in order to grab ammo. All, if you're wondering what these uh, circular bins are, uh, these are all places for ammunition stowage. There's also some horizontal ammunition stowage. Uh, there is more on the far side. We've also got the casing uh, catcher here, along with the brass deflector, too. So when the 75mm uh, gun casings recoil out the back of the gun, because it is an automatic breech block, or a semi-automatic breech block, it hits it hits this, uh, this plate and then falls down into this bin, where shell cases can be collected and disposed of at a later date. One final thing to note about the vehicle, the loader has his own vision port here. Uh, I called it a periscope earlier, this is actually a vision port. And that pretty much does it. It's rather simplistic at the moment, as this is the very first public version available, but I think it shows promise and I would like to see more in the future. If you guys are interested in seeing more as well, I'm hoping to do some collaborative work with Mike Goes Boom. Hopefully we can get a tank crew going and, uh, and do some combat mission stuff. So let us know if you want to see that. And without further ado, this has been Many Miles Away. Keep your tracks checked, keep your binds in place, keep around on the tube, and I will see all of you guys in the next video. And if you like this video, please leave a like and a comment down below. And if you aren't subscribed already, please do so as well and hit the bell button. Have a good one, everybody.